Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Did you bring your thinking caps? Because it's time to put them on. Because the conversation starts. Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains here. This is the spot, the place, where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Today, we have Judith Richards. Judith really had some trials and tribulations growing up, and through that, she has turned (laughs) that pain into a passion. She's created the Richards Trauma Process, T R T. It is a process that she has customized to help people get through extreme trauma in four to five sessions. I went, did I do it wrong? <laughs> three, to four, three to four, April. Three to four. Oh, okay. I took too many then. <laughs> Forgive That's me. That's okay. No three problem. But I want to I want to hear how she does that, even in three yeah. to four. You know, some people go through talk therapy for 20 years. Yeah. So what is her secret sauce? What is her recipe for success that really <clears throat> taps into the psyche of these individuals with staying power that help them get through these traumatic times? Help me welcome her to the edge. How are you, Judith? I'm fabulous. Thank you. April. lovely to be here with you. It's lovely to be here with you. And thank you so much for being patient. Brains, let me tell you, technology can wear you out and it can set up anxiety and it can set up stress. And it can put you in a state of depression. So you're the perfect person that I need to talk to right now to calm me down. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you show up in the world, please, Judith. Okay, April. Um, I'm in Australia. I'm in Queensland, Australia. Um, <clears throat> as you said, I, I'm the creator of the Richards Trauma Process, or TRTP. Um, this process is a three to four session process that resolves trauma-related issues, anxiety, depression, PTSD, all of that. I teach um, psychiatrists, psychologists, counselors, medical doctors, how to do this process with their patients and clients. Um, It came from my own journey through extreme trauma. Um, I was Catholic growing up, so I had lots of Lots of experiences with Catholic priests and nuns. And then I, 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 we take on, when we're very young, from the time we're, even before we're born till the time we're seven, we take on ideas of who we are and our place in the world. And these ideas, these unconscious core beliefs become our foundation and upon that foundation, our life is built. So when I was little, I went through um, child, uh, sexual abuse. Uh, I took on the idea that there's something wrong with me. I attract, I make bad people, I make good people do things. Sorry, I make good people do bad things. And that became the story of my life. We manifest what our unconscious beliefs to be true. And so by the time I was in my late teens, I'd introduce myself. Hi, I'm Judith. I attract violent lunatics. What can I say? It's a gift. And that was the story of my life. So I had stalkers. I had violent relationships. I worked my way up through the hierarchy of violent lunatics until I found myself with a homicidal psychopath who was into torture. And that went on for nine years. Um, And I say this snarkily, you know, trying to make a joke out of it. But, you know, a little booty slapping or a little tying up, ain't nothing wrong with that. But this person was really on the the opposite end of that. They were on the crazy side. Oh, oh. Yeah, I had to have a lot of surgery at the end of that to put my body back together. Oh, my God. <clears throat> and the, the doctors said, um, you'll be in chronic ill health and chronic pain for your very rest of your very short life. And that was in 1999, and I just get more and more healthy. So I got to a point of intense mental health crisis. <laughs> so I, I, lost, I lost my mind, basically. I had extreme PTSD. 
Um, I was disappearing into various, uh, a few different personalities. I was living in hallucinations. Uh, and Were you self-medicating as well? No. Wow. No. Um, and I had a son who was, was in a very bad way. So I took him to mental health services. I took him wherever I could. And we came home and I said, you know what? They've got no idea what they're doing. He was 12. And uh, we said about, I said, we're capable and intelligent. There is a way, we'll find a way. And so that's what we did. Um, <clears throat> he's now well. I'm very well. What happened was people in the small community I lived in saw me go from what the teenagers called the mad beanie woman um, mm. uh, to quite well. And so they started bringing me their loved ones. And, they, and I just did what I had done with myself to get well. And they got well. And then I was asked to speak somewhere. And at the end of that, there was a psychiatrist, psychologist, different people saying teach me and I said I, I don't teach so, well you do now and so it's all just happened by itself really <clears throat> so I started teaching in 2014 I've taught hundreds of mental health and health professionals now and we're about to launch into the states next year um, from Australia I'm in a film by one of Australia's top filmmakers Bill Bennett it's on facing fear it's a documentary uh, in that film, uh, people that uh, some of your listeners might know, April, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Bruce, Dr. Bruce Lipton, Dr. Joe yes. Spencer, mm -hmm. Carolyn Ice. Um, so it's, it's going to be a great film. You'll enjoy it. It'll be released in January next year. Wow. Let me ask a question. What was your, because you went through so much, what was your aha moment? What was your awakening? When did you kind of snap out of it or start snapping in a different direction? Did you have an epiphany? Did you no. have a, 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 a past life regression? Did you no. get a, a talk from God? What happened? You just woke up no. one day and everything was okay? Nope. No, it was a long journey, April. Mm. It, it was a long journey. Um, and I was blessed with the belief that there was a way. So I stayed away from the medical profession. I stayed away from pharmaceuticals. I wanted enough of my mind clear so that I could think and find the way. So I, I, I'm, I'm ridiculously optimistic given the circumstances of my life. And I, I just kept going. And um, so now the result of the process is, for example, uh, David Clough, one of my counselor graduates worked with a man with over a hundred personalities. And by the end of the second session, all the personalities were integrated. The, the spokesperson for the personality said to the client, let's call him Bill, <laughs> uh, Bill, it's over and we're safe now. And it's over and you're safe now. So you don't need to hear from us anymore. You've got this. That was just over two years ago. We were waiting two years to see if he stayed well before we publish that case. Um, and so, so this, just to give you an idea of how effective it is, a, a psychiatrist rang me. He said, I'm Dr. So-and-so. I run a trauma unit at, the, at a, the biggest psych hospital in Melbourne, Australia. I'm a PTSD expert. I'm a name, I'm published. I present at PTSD conferences internationally. And I've been working with this patient for nine years, with complex PTSD. I've mm. hospitalized him more than half the time to keep him well to keep him alive. And um, he did, I'm ringing you because he's just left my rooms. I've seen him every fortnight for nine years and we've just had our normal two weekly appointment. Mm -hmm. And he has left my rooms and I have just witnessed a miracle in the two weeks since I last saw him, he went to one of your students, not even a graduate, a student had your three sessions and is now completely well. And this is impossible, but I've just seen it with my own eyes. I have to know what you're doing now. I Yeah. Okay. Cause I need to know what you're doing too. And I say this, I understand that you can't go into the intellectual properties because mm -hmm. it's a, a, a mute point in working with you, but there's got to be something that people can approach. They just can't say, Oh, okay. You know, I met Judith Richards. She's a great woman. We went through these three sessions and now abracadabra I'm healed and all 100 personalities have now shrunk back into this one person. 
is this a form of talk therapy, medication, no, meditation? No, 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 no. Okay. So I'll just give you a quick. Yeah, tell, <laughs> give me, give me something to lesson. walk away with. Cause, okay. Because my people are going to be like, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, so in, under, in order to understand this, we have to understand how trauma works. So let's say there's uh, a, a child, they have a distressing event. You know, let's take away the word trauma for, for, to begin with, because most people think murder, war, let's say distressing events, because that gives us a broader view. So let's say there's a child, they have a distressing event. What happens in their body? They release the amygdala in their brain, the emergency services, new, 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 goes off. And mm -hmm. that causes a release of adrenaline and cortisol and other stress hormones. Mm -hmm. They flood the body, all the systems we don't need to run from the tiger. <laughs> because right. it was back in the day, a long time ago, these systems were created. And the systems that we don't need for immediate fight or flight, to fight the tiger or run from the tiger, all the systems that use up a lot of energy are shut down so that all that energy goes to the big muscle groups, the legs and the arms so that we can fight or flee. Mm. One, of, one of the systems that gets shut down is the digestion. The other one is the immune system. The other thing that happens is our frontal lobe gets shut down. We don't need to do maths when we're running from a tiger. And one of the shutdowns that can happen in a dysregulated system is the hippocampus, the part of the brain responsible for long-term memory gets shut down too. So what actually happens is that little child has a distressing event, releases all the adrenaline and the event is over. And in a regulated system, without even doing anything, that little child's whole body, whole psyche, whole being will come back to calm without them doing anything. But in a dysregulated system, one that's overwhelmed, that doesn't happen. Instead of the hippocamp hippocampus taking that event at the end, once it's over, and putting it in the warehouse of memory and shutting the door and going, well, that's over, let's move on, that memory is stored in the unconscious like a videotape loop. It's happening now, it's happening now, it's happening now. And the unconscious runs the body. It runs every chemical reaction, every electrical response. And so the body is responding as if that's happening now. And so it's like, you've got that videotape loop from when I was three and when I was seven, when I was nine, when I was 12, when I was 15, when I was 22, when I was 33, blah, 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 blah. And it's like the pressure in a balloon and it blows up and up, the pressure blows up and it gets to a point and it can just be some small thing. It doesn't have to be catastrophic. And the balloon will pop out and we'll go into anxiety, we'll go into depression. If it's a catastrophic event, we could go into PTSD. But let's look at anxiety. What sits behind anxiety? Why do we get stuck in anxiety? With anxiety, our whole system is stuck in the state of I'm not safe. And for those of us who've experienced anxiety, we know what that feels like. And we catastrophize. We plan to meet every possible catastrophe that could happen. Anxiety doesn't come. I don't know. I've experienced some anxiety here recently and um it didn't come from i'm not safe it came from i'm nervous i'm anxious i'm excited i just i'm, I'm frustrated not that i didn't not feel safe i felt safe but i felt all these other compound emotions that made me hyper vigilant and shake and tremble and okay so i'll tell you why you were stuck in that anxiety state you're not consciously aware of the feeling of i'm not safe but what's happening is you're not just responding to what's going on now. That's not causing the anxiety, not just that. It's those videotape loops from your past, the, the events that were never put in long-term memory in the warehouse of memory and the door shut. What happens is something happens now and those videotape loops start from when you were seven and something that caused, caused panic, anxiety to happen when you're 13, when you're 15, when you're 22. And so what happens now is there's something happens and anything like that that happened in your past will start up in your unconscious again and your body will respond as if that and that and that and that are happening now. So your body will respond with anxiety, with stress, with panic. But it's not just about what's happening now. So how do we stop the anxiety? It's very, very easy. You can just turn it off like that. 
you turn off the top three most distressing events of the past that have never been stored in long-term memory. You turn it off and you put those in long-term memory and the anxiety just disappears. The depression just disappears. Forever? The PTSD. Yeah. Wow. And life, life happens. We can, t- you know, life's job is to present us with challenges. But what happens, have you ever done a factory reboot on a phone, April? I don't, don't, don't talk to me about no computers right now. After all, I just, <laughs> you, you're going to start that three-year-old, seven-year-old, 15-year-old, <laughs> yeah. that anxiety is going to come back. But yeah, I get you. Yeah, the factory. Yeah. Reboot. And so what happens is with this process, we bring the whole system back to how it was so that when there's a distressing event, instead of staying in that hyper aroused, hyper vigilant state, our whole system comes back to calm. Mm. Our heart rate comes down, everything comes down. So we can still have dis- distressing events because that's life, hey. But what happens is we have a distressing event, we release the stress hormones, but the system, our body and our being brings us straight back down. So we're not stuck in that anxiety state at all. So, so we don't experience it as anxiety. It took a lot of work. How'd you become so super smart and come up with this? I mean, and I, I say this with respect, uh, but there's been people that have been before you with, you know, millions of degrees and doctorates and all of that. They didn't get it. Was this, yeah. was this a gift? Was this a download that was given to you? Was this something that you had set out as a goal and a mission that you wanted to create? No, I just wanted to be well. And I wanted my son to be well. And I didn't have the background of psychology and mental health profession education. Um, And as a a professor, I get phone calls from professors of psychology from all around the world. And uh, one little while ago said, so what is your, you know, what you've created is revolutionary. What's your background? You know, what areas of research are your PhDs in? I said, I don't have PhD. I said, masters, no. Don't tell me you're a, not a psycho- that you're not a psychologist. I said, I won't mention it. <laughs> he said, you're not a psychologist? I said, no. He said, do you have any tertiary training? I said, yes, I was trained as a classical pianist at the Conservatorium of Music. Mm. And he was, he was quiet for a while. And he said, of course, it couldn't have come from psychology. He said, let me describe psychology to you. It's like a very slow moving train with every window boarded up, except the back window. Mm. And he said it it needed someone to come in with fresh eyes and fresh experience to create this. And so how do we turn off those videotape loops? We talk, these videotape loops are in the unconscious. So doesn't it make sense to speak to the unconscious in the language of the unconscious? What's the language of the unconscious? Mm. It's, the, it's the imagination. We experience it at night, April, in our dreams, when we daydream. All we need in order to speak to the unconscious is two words. Just imagine. Mm. And with those two words, the critical facility steps aside. And we can imagine whatever we want to imagine without the conscious mind going, well, that's not possible. You cannot ride a horse along a beach with a purple ocean <laughs> And, and take off into the sky, but we can in our imagination. And so we use our imagination. The thing is the body and the unconscious believe what we richly imagine. If, mm. we, if we richly imagine, April, if you richly imagine- I've done it. Sucking a wedge of lemon and it's really juicy and it's really sour, I am getting the saliva response right right now. Right. My body is behaving as if I've really got a piece of lemon there that I'm sucking on. I've done it. I've seen things, I've manifested things. I was just telling someone uh, about a dream that I have, just a a huge dream, but I can see every nano detail. I can see the colors, I can see the shapes, I can smell it, I can taste it. It all starts with the thought. How do you know what you want? How do you know where you want to go on vacation? What you want for dinner? You know, just the smallest things. What you want in a relationship? What uh, what color you're going to wear tomorrow? You have to think this through, this process. So I get it. 
but it's just really kind of hard to embrace, you know, that you can really turn around the trajectory of your entire life by using some of these same very simplistic practices. And I'm just so proud of you and all the work that you've accomplished. And not only that, but you didn't, you weren't selfish with it. You shared it with the world. Oh yeah. And, and the way making- I look at it is it's not mine. It just came through me. Wow. So, um, and so we, we take a client through imaginary scenarios that they, they richly live. We say that the more, more, rich you make your internal experience the more profound will be your outcome so we take Mm. people through imaginary scenarios to take them to a place of uh of empowerment and as uh there are two two top people in trauma dr peter levine and dr bessel van der kolk and they both agree that two things have to happen in order to resolve trauma. The person has to be moved to an empowered position in regard to what happened. Mm-hmm. And the body has to know it's over because the trauma is stored in the body. I go further and say the, the trauma is stored in the body and in the unconscious because it's the unconscious that runs the body. Every chemical reaction, every electrical response. And so by taking people through specific imaginary scenarios, we take them to a place of absolute empowerment in regard to what happened and the body and the unconscious knows it's over and I'm safe now. Mm -hmm. And the whole system comes from the fight, flight, freeze response, either the hyper aroused state of anxiety or the shutdown state of freeze, depression. So fight and flight, anxiety, freeze, depression. The body comes down from there to self-regulation, it's over, and I'm safe now. And every system in the body goes back to normal. I have um, uh, one of my graduates, Rosemary Boone, is a leader, she's a psychologist and a neuroscientist, a leader in the world of neural feedback. And she can look at an EEG and tell if someone has PTSD, because what happens with PTSD is brain structure and brain function changes. And she's doing EEGs before doing TRTP with a client and after showing return to normal brain function. So that's yeah, what we do. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing. And it is transformational. But let's talk about something else. Let's talk about you and what brings you joy in your life. At this particular point, not you know your program, not this groundbreaking revolutionary uh, discovery that you've made, not your son, but what brings you pure, unadulterated joy? I live at the mouth of a big river that goes into the ocean. Mm. <laughs> and I love to walk along the river and around the corner where the surf is. And there's a cliff. There's a little cliff where you can stand and look down and there's all tropical fish. Mm. And, and that, that gives me a lot of joy. <laughs> at lunchtime, sometimes my staff and I go down there and, and stand and look at the fish and they go, yep, they're fish. It doesn't bring them joy, but gee, it brings me joy. Say, yeah, look at the fish. So that brings me a lot of joy and music. Music. And music brings me what type of, of music do you like, Judith? All sorts of music. I was trained as a classical pianist, but all sorts of music, rock and roll, all sorts of music mm. um, brings me joy. What, uh, what's one of your hobbies? What do you like to do, you know? Play music. Play, play music? <laughs> okay, all right. Can you, yes. play, well, play. classical music, I know you know how to read it, but can you compose some things as well? Yeah, yeah. Wow. All, all, of, all of that, but, um, but I, I, I enjoy people. My hobby is people, you know? You go to the coffee shop and you just meet people. I went to the coffee shop recently and met, uh, a lieutenant colonel from, who is an Australian but seconded to the US military. He, he was a professor of economics and national security. He's a doctor of business. And uh, we were, I just met him at the coffee shop. We were just waiting for coffee. Wow. And, now, and now he's writing an economics paper to be published in a health economics journal on the, different, <laughs> on the cost of trauma to, to economies, to governments, to businesses, and how much more effective 
cost effective it would be to use this process. So you just don't know. I, and you, I just love talking to people. Everyone's got a story, April. Everybody's the, got a story. Everyone yeah. has a story. Absolutely. And what we have to do is show a level of interest or engagement in those stories. You know, what, um, how are they relatable to us? That's like what you've been through, what I've been through. Two different life stories, but the parallel and the synergy of being a woman and going through, you know, different phases, being a mother, um, yeah. dealing in relationships, all of those are synergies. And that's what we want to align. So if you were an animal, Judith, what animal would you be and why? A sea otter. A sea otter? No one's ever <laughs> picked a sea otter. Why? Well, it's out there in the water with those fish. You like the water. I like the water. I like the fish. Um, sea otters are playful and incredibly protective of their young. You know, they're playful, they're happy, but you come near their baby, right? they will kill you. They will go insane. They will. And they so, and mean. I know there's a lot of them here. I see them here uh, and we have a cove and a lot of people try to get them off the cove because they do stink when they get a bunch of them together and it's a pretty affluent area. But they have been very combative. They're just not going out just any old kind of way. They're very protective of their space. They are. And so those two things of playfulness uh, and then enjoying themselves and self-protection and protection of young, that they do it for me. What do you want your legacy to be, Judith? Um... I want to be a multimillionaire, April, but let me tell you what that means. Not in terms of money, but because of what I went through and what I created, that tens of millions of people will be stepped through to the other side of their pain. Oh, wow. That's big. Uh, we've already done about a million. Wow. So we're, we're well on our way. Wow. <laughs> and we go to the States. We're coming to the States in January. Watch out for the film. It's called Facing Fear. Wow. Okay. And so is it going to be a docu-series, documentary? Is it going to be something? A documentary. Like oh, it will I be. thought I'll be able to a bit watch it. No, no. You'll have to go to a cinema to watch it until all the cinemas are done, and then it will be available on streaming. But it will be released in the States and then Canada, the UK. Are you so, going to let me know when that release is going to happen so that I can have the exclusive? I want to be in one of those theaters so I can say that I interviewed okay. you. Where are you? I'm April. in San Diego, Where? California. Paris. Oh, we'll be there. San Diego, we'll be there. We, we open in San Francisco at George Lucas's cinema. Oh, okay. In San, no, San Rafael, across the bay from San Francisco. Okay. Yeah, so we'll be going to cinemas. I'll keep you informed. You promise? Okay. <laughs> because I don't want to miss that. Have you, you have you written a book about this as well? Um, the book will be released just before the film. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so uh, what, will, what, what will happen is there'll be screenings. And for the first few screenings, it's likely that Bill and myself, Bill, Bill whose film it is, film the, Bill the, Bennett, the filmmaker, and myself and maybe another from the film will do a Q&A after the film because people will have lots of questions. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll invite you to one of those, April. Right. And when we get offline, I'm going to turn you on to something uh, here that you'll probably want to get involved with, uh, with the public television. Tell my brains how to get in, in contact with you, uh, Judith Richards, so that they can do a deep dive. And brains, I want you to go in, have a consultation, you know, this is heavy stuff. This is not just, you know, again, Judith makes it seem very simplistic. But when you're going into those deep, dark cabinets, you're going to find some cobwebs. You're going to find some bugs. You're going to find some broken dishes. There's a whole lot of stuff that you stored in your cupboard of life. And Judith yeah. is there to help you uncover that, to glue those yeah. pieces back together, to get the cobwebs out and to help you rebuild your life. So it's a lot of work. And I know that it seems confusing because I had anxiety until I heard her voice. And I just, 
She says, it's okay, April. Things happen. And her just her voice inflection just took me down. So to actually go through this process within three or four ses sessions, I can't wait to see the film. I'm excited. I'm really yeah, excited. Yeah, well, the film's about fear. It's not actually about the process. But um, April, the thing with, the, with what, what I do, what I teach, is it's not talk therapy. You don't have to tell your story. We don't even want the story. Mm, mm, mm. Um, so there's no re-traumatizing. And it's, it's done on easily on Zoom. You know, you don't even have wow. to leave home. It's wow. just as effective on Zoom as it is face-to-face. -face. So, you know, when I was in practice, I'm not seeing clients now. I figure I can help more people just by focusing on teaching. Um, I, I had clients all over the world from, from the US to Hong Kong to Azerbaijan. It's just as effective online as it is face-to-face. -face. Wow. Yeah. So oh, we're going to play it in contact with you. Yeah. If um, people go to the website and we'll have a new one, <laughs> we're working on a new one, uh, which will be much better, but the current one will do. It's the T H E Richards, R I C H A R D S, trauma, T R A U M A, process, P R O C E W S dot com. If you go there, you can go to the practitioner directory on the menu and find a practitioner who's, who you feel is a match. We, we know so much by just looking at someone's photo. You can connect with them and have a short conversation and just see if they are a match for you, because that's important. If you're wanting to find out more about the training, it's an eight-week training program. Uh, to become a TRTP practitioner, you can go to the contact page or on most of the pages, there's a Q and A that you can just click, make an appointment for a conversation and we'll talk with you. We'll have a conversation. Well, I'm excited. I really am. Brains, I want you to go in and take advantage of this. Have the conversation. If it's for you, great. If you're not ready for it, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. But don't yeah. deny yourself the opportunity to heal and to grow and to live a full, uh, fearless, carefree life like Judith has. She has really reinvented herself as well as her son. And she's poured into others. Thank you so much for being here with me, Judith. Braves, I need you to love, like, and share. <laughs> Thanks, love, April. like, share, and subscribe to Judith as well as myself. All of her information, contact information, will be at the back of this interview and in the show notes and ongoing. As I see things evolving, I'm going to post, let you know she might be in your town and you will be a lucky person to be able to view the, um, the, the uh, documentary on fear. We need to be able to, to overcome that because I believe fear is a liar. It is something there to hold us and keep us captive. Thanks, April. All it's right. a delight to be with you. Bye. All right. Bye, brains.